Hello everyone and welcome to the Ice Garden's brand new video series, A Beginner's Guide to Women's Hockey. In today's video, we'll be tackling the National Women's Hockey League, or the NWHL. I'm your host, Anne Tukarski, and I'm here to get you acquainted with all things NWHL hockey before the start of Season 6 in January. And yes, you heard that right. The season won't be kicking things off until January of 2021, so you've got plenty of time to get caught up on all the action. We're going to start things off with a brief history of the league. Established in 2015 by Commissioner Danny Ryland, who is a graduate of Northeastern University's women's hockey program, the NWHL was conceived with the mission of providing strong female role models for the community while fueling the continued growth of the sport and brand of women's hockey. While not the first professional women's hockey league by any stretch, the NWHL has evolved into an attraction for domestic and overseas players and become one of the pinnacles of of the professional women's game in just six short years. Make sure to follow the league on social media at the handles on screen. Before we get into the nitty gritty of each franchise, it's important that we take a second to recognize what each team is fighting for, and that's the Isabel Cup. The Isabel Cup is named for Lord Stanley's daughter, Lady Isabel, and it's the championship trophy awarded to the postseason victor at the end of every season in the NWHL. Make sure you take a good look at this picture on the right side of the screen. That's the cup itself. Make sure you're taking stock of all of its parts, and now look at the picture on the next screen. Notice anything different? Yeah, the handles are gone. Thanks, Sonya Packer. That's a story we can get into another time, but for now, let's talk about the past five years Isabel Cup champions. In the league's inaugural season, the Boston Pride took home the cup in the best of three series versus the Buffalo Buttes. In 2017, the Buttes would play the Pride again in a single-game series, where they took home Lady Isabel in a decisive 3-2 victory. 2018 saw the Riveters win a tight 1-0 game over the Buttes, and in 2019 it took overtime for Lee Steckline and the Minnesota Whitecaps to best the Buttes. Notice a trend? Yeah, us too. The Buffalo Buttes have appeared in every Isabel Cup final to date except for 2020s, which didn't happen due to the COVID-19 pandemic that is currently delaying the start of Season 6. To date, there have been no repeat Isabel Cup champions. 2020's Isabel Cup final would have seen the first repeat champion, as 2019 Cup winner Minnesota was set to square off against 2016 champion Boston. No matter the outcome of the game, one team would emerge with their second Isabel Cup, except unforeseen circumstances, aka the COVID-19 pandemic, canceled the final and were left without any Isabel Cup champion this season. Okay, you're probably wondering when I'm going to start talking about the actual teams in the league, and that's right about now. As of 2020, there are six franchises in the NWHL. We'll be talking about these franchises in chronological order as they join the league, starting with the four you see here on the map. These franchises are the founding four, the first four in the NWHL, and they're kind of like the NWHL's version of the original six, if you're familiar with men's hockey. The founding four teams are the Buffalo Buttes, the Boston Pride, the Connecticut Whale, and the Metropolitan Riveters. Of these four teams, three of them, or everyone except Connecticut, have won an Isabel Cup. We're going to be reviewing each team individually in alphabetical order, so get ready to find your favorite. Kicking things off in our review of each team is the Boston Pride, the first ever Isabel Cup champions. The Pride make their home in Warrior Ice Arena in Boston, Massachusetts. They're the only team with a team president. Theirs is Haley Moore, the former deputy commissioner of the league. Moore works in conjunction with general manager Carolyn Pilch to ensure everything goes smoothly for the Pride and that the players and head coach Paul Morrow only have one thing on their minds, playing hockey and bringing the Isabel Cup back to Boston. On the ice, the Pride are led by Jillian Dempsey, the captain of the squad and an original NWHLer. Being an original NWHLer means that the player in question has played in every season since the league's conception. There are currently eight of them, and seven of them are re-signed for season six. Anyways, during the 2019-2020 season, the Pride won 23 out of 24 games on their schedule, losing only one contest at the hands of the Minnesota Whitecaps. Understandably, their record quickly became the best record in NWHL history. We're going to be talking about some notable players on each team. And who better to kick things off for the Boston Pride than Captain Jillian Dempsey? Dempsey is a forward and an integral part of the Pride's firepower, as she scored 17 goals and registered 23 assists for a total of 40 points in Season 5. 
Dempsey also didn't miss a game all season, despite being a full-time school teacher in the Boston area. She's one of almost a full roster of players resigned to Boston's roster for season six. And like we mentioned before, it'll be her sixth season in the league, making her an original NWHLer. In 2019 to 2020, Dempsey was named the NWHL's co-MVP and had the honor of captaining a team at the NWHL All-Star Game back in February. Up next, we've got defender Kaylee Fratkin, another original NWHLer who will be embarking on her sixth season in the league in 2020 to 2021. Not only was Fratkin a force to be reckoned with on the blue line, but she was a huge playmaker too, registering 20 assists over the course of the season. She had such a good season, in fact, that she was honored with a 2020 All-Star selection in February, and was named the 2019-2020 Defender of the Year at the conclusion of the regular season. Now, we wouldn't be talking about notable players on the Pride if we left out their absolutely phenomenal goaltender, Lovisa Salander. The Swedish national team goalie recently re-signed for her second season in the NWHL after posting a 1.71 goals against average and a .941 save percentage over 23 games started. For those of you who aren't super familiar with goalie stats, that's like ridiculously good. As was to be expected when you have stats that good, Salander was named a 2020 All-Star. To cap off her stellar rookie season, she was also named the 2019-2020 Goaltender of the Year. If you do choose to root for the Pride as your number one team, there's no reason you shouldn't get yourself a Salander jersey, because a goalie like Lovisa is an absolute steal in the free agent market, and she's sure to be sticking around for a while. Our final notable player on the Pride is a fan favorite and a huge offensive threat, and that's forward Tori Sullivan. Sullivan had a great rookie season, putting up 11 goals and 14 assists for 25 points over 24 games played. She also had a pretty incredible shootout goal over the whale that clinched the victory for the pride in that game. And, as if that wasn't enough, she makes really funny TikToks that have kind of taken over the internet. If you become a pride fan for life, there's no way a player personality like Tori Sullivan doesn't become one of your favorites too. Our 2020 draft pick to watch for the pride is Teresa Vanasova, a Czech forward out of the University of Maine who posted 14 goals and 17 assists for 31 points for the Black Bears during her senior season. Not only has she excelled on NCAA ice, but she's played an integral role for the Czech national team since her junior days, when she scored three goals in her first ever international tournament to help lead the Czechs to a sixth place finish at the U18 Women's World Championship. You can keep up with the Pride by following them on Instagram, Twitter, and even on TikTok. Their Instagram and Twitter handles are at the Boston Pride, and on TikTok, they're just at Boston Pride. Now, why should you support the Pride? Well, we've got TikTok sensation and notable Pride forward Tori Sullivan here to tell you why the NWHL's winningest team deserves your fandom. Hockey fans and uh, hopefully potential Boston Pride fans, uh, Tori Sullivan here. I'm a forward on the Boston Pride. I uh, hope everyone's staying safe and healthy. Uh, just a little bit about our organization. Uh, we, we love our fans, we love engaging with them on and off the ice, uh, making sure that you know, they have the best experience as possible and, and know that they're the glue of this organization and, and are just as much as part of the team as we are. Um, we uh, are highly competitive, highly talented uh, group of players who, who I think could be comedians if uh, we weren't into hockey. We love adding humor to the sport. Um, I would, you know, check out our social media handles. Um, we love to post some funny, funny content on there. Uh, but yeah, we are um, uh, high caliber players who, who want to represent, you know, our fans, uh, the city of Boston, uh, women's hockey, and hockey as a whole. Thanks, Tori. Up next on the franchise front is the Buffalo Buttes, who, as we mentioned before, have appeared in every Isabel Cup final prior to 2020's postponed match including their 2017 Isabel Cup win. That's no small feat for a team in a league where pl each player's contract only lasts one year. The Buttes have their home at Fort Butte, more commonly referred to as Northtown Center, just 20 minutes outside of Buffalo, New York. Their newly appointed general manager, Nate Oliver, has done a fantastic job of connecting the team to the community, whether it's the residents of Western New York or Buttes fans outside the 716 area code. On the ice, the Buttes are led by head coach and snazzy hat wearer Pete Parham, as well as captain Corinne Bowie. 
Louie is one of the eight original NWHLers we mentioned before, but so far, she's the only one of the original eight that is yet to sign a contract for season six. The Buttes' record in the 2019-2020 season wasn't quite on par with the Boston Prides. The Buttes had eight wins, 15 losses, and one overtime loss, but we'd say that's pretty solid for a team that basically had to build from the ground up this season, considering that the Buttes only had two players returning from the previous year's roster. Of those two returning players, only one is signed on for season six, and that's Taylor Akersey. Speaking of Taylor Kersey, who better to kick off the Buffalo Buttes notable players than the Queen of Sellies herself? During the 2019-2020 season, Kersey tallied 25 points off of 9 assists and 16 goals, including one spectacular 4-goal period, and yes, we said period, not even game, period, of hockey, during the Buffalo Believes Classic at the end of 2019. She was honored as a 2020 All-Star and was one of the first players to sign on for the NWHL Season 6. Our next notable player is 4 foot 11 inch defender MJ Peltier, nicknamed Mighty Mouse for her size and strength. As a rookie, Peltier set a Buttes franchise record for assists in a season with 15 and an NWHL record for power play points in a season with 11. She finished her 2019-2020 campaign with 6 goals and 15 assists for 21 points in 24 games as a defender. She was honored as a 2020 All-Star alongside several of her teammates in Buttes Blue. As always, we've got to give some love to the goaltenders, and recent signee Kelsey Newman is the Buttes goalie we're advising you to keep your eye on. Newman will be entering her fourth season in the NWHL next year after starting six games for the Buttes in 2019-2020 and establishing a 4.40 goals against average and a .879 save percentage. While these numbers aren't perfect, it's important to remember that this roster has never played with each other before. Every player, save two veterans, was a brand new addition to the team. That being said, we think Newman's pretty awesome on the ice, and off of it, where she's a Lift the Mask ambassador for mental health and hockey goaltending. Our final player to watch for the Buttes is a transfer player, and it's forward Kayla Menigan. Menigan spent her last two seasons in the league with the Connecticut Whale while coaching women's hockey at St. Anselm College in New Hampshire. Talk about a hike! Menigan will be entering her third season with the league, but in new colors, coming off of a four-goal, four-assist season with the Whale. While the stat sheet might not show it, Menigan truly is a player you want to keep your eye on, especially when things get messy in front of the net. The Buttes' notable draft pick is third overall selection Carly Jackson, a goaltender who played with pride draft pick Vanisova at the University of Maine. After starting in net for the Black Bears all four seasons of her collegiate career, Jackson posted a 1.90 goals against average and maintained a .934 save percentage over 30 games started in her senior year. The trio of Jackson, Newman, and free agent signing Katie Flagg is sure to make the Buttes' net impenetrable in Season 6. You can keep up with the Buttes by following them on Instagram and Twitter. You can find them on both platforms at Buffalo Buttes. Now, why should you support the Buttes? Well, we've got some special guests here to tell you why Buffalo's team deserves your fandom. Hey everyone, my name's Chris in the Wiki. I'm a forward for the Buffalo Buttes. The Buttes organization is a great team to support as we're dedicated to the city of Buffalo and our Buttes fans. We're a very hardworking group that's going to do everything we can to win games and bring back an Isabel Cup to the city of Buffalo. There's a lot of talent on our team this year that you're not going to want to miss when we hit the ice. We're really close with our Buttes fans and want to provide them with the most fun experience when they attend our games. Their support does not go unnoticed. We also have the best colors. Support the Buttes. Hey guys, it's Taylor Percy here. I'm a left winger for the Buffalo Buttes in the National Women's Hockey League. Um, I'm here to tell you why you guys should support the Buffalo Buttes. Uh, we have action-packed, fun-filled games, and we're a very community-based organization. So hopefully we see you all at a game this coming season. Hey guys, Kelsey Newman, goalie for the Buffalo Buttes. You should be a Buttes fan because we get really involved in the community. The Buttes players inspire us to be really good athletes and all-around good people. And because they said so. A huge thank you to Kristen, Taylor, Kelsey, and friends. Okay. Coming in third out of the four founding four franchises is the Connecticut Whale, historically the underdog team. The Whale have moved around a lot in the past few years, but they'll be making their home at Danbury Ice Arena in Danbury, Connecticut, 
under the careful watch of general manager and former Isabel Cup champion Bray Ketchum Peel. The Whale are coached by Colton Orr and led on the ice by Captain Shannon Doyle, who, like Corinne Bowie, Jillian Dempsey, and Kaylee Fratkin, is an original NWHLer. In the 2019-2020 season, the Whale finished at the bottom of the league standings with only two wins to their name, compounded by 20 losses and two overtime losses. The Whale are also the only one of the founding four franchises to have never won the Isabel Cup. But don't worry, that doesn't mean things are all doom and gloom if you decide to be a Whale fan. The Whale have one of the most promising rosters for season six, including forward Emma Vlasic, who will be suiting up for her second season in the NWHL in 2020 to 2021. Vlasic scored nine goals, good for the team lead, and was named to the 2020 All-Star Game in the midst of a very promising rookie campaign. Whale fans are super lucky to have this scoring phenom back on the ice in Danbury next season. Another reason for Whale fans to celebrate next season is the return of Captain Shannon Doyle for her sixth season in the NWHL. The defender tallied two goals and nine assists for a team leading 11 points in the 2019-2020 season and was selected as a 2020 All-Star. She also raised over $2,000 with her Blocks for Books campaign, which aimed to raise money to buy books for children in underserved communities across the globe. I mean, what can we say? That's just how we roll in the NWHL. Our notable players wouldn't be complete without another goaltender, and this time it's Brooke Waleko. Waleko finished her rookie campaign in the league this season with some pretty spectacular numbers on a team that's faced some pretty notorious struggles throughout its history. Her 3.62 goals against average was fairly solid, but it's her .914 save percentage that really takes the cake and solidifies Waleko as a crucial part of the Whale rebuild. We've got another player for you to keep your eye on, and that's forward Casey Anderson, who will be starting her fourth season in the NWHL and with the Whale in 2020. Anderson tied Doyle for the team lead in points with 11, off of three goals and eight assists, all of which are good for career highs in the NWHL for Anderson. And you know what that means, there's nowhere for her to go but up. Our draft pick to watch for the Whale is forward Kayla Friesen out of Clarkson University. Friesen had a huge senior season with the Golden Knights after her transfer from St. Cloud State, helping buoy her new team to the NCAA tournament by posting 10 goals and 20 assists for 30 points. She was drafted second overall by the Whale, and while it seemed like she might not originally sign in the league for season six, the fact that the Whale were able to lock her down is something to be hugely excited for. You can keep up with the Whale by following them on social media at Connecticut Whale on Instagram and at ctwhale underscore nwhl on Twitter. You might be wondering why the Whale deserve your support, and we've got just the answer for you. Original NWHLer Elena Orlando, who has spent five professional seasons with the Whale, is here to tell you why you should cheer for this underdog team. Hi, I'm Elena Orlando, number 14 on the Connecticut Whale. We currently play out of Danbury, Connecticut, and while we haven't captured the Isabel Cup, I'm going to give you a few reasons why you should be a CT Whale fan. One, we have the best jersey in the NWHL. I mean, come on, look at that. What's not to love? Look at that whale. See how happy he is? You'll be that happy too if you're a Connecticut Whale fan. Two, our coach almost won Battle of the Blades. You can't watch Colton Orr skate to Old Town Road and not be a fan. And I'm gonna take my horse to the Old Town Road. Three, we've been an underdog the past couple seasons but we have an up and coming group and play a fast physical style of hockey that any hockey fan would enjoy. It's Year of the Whale, fins up. Thank you, Elena. Now we move on to the final founding four team, the Metropolitan Riveters. Originally called the New York Riveters before their move out of the city, the team plays in Pro Skate Arena in Monmouth Junction, New Jersey. General Manager Kate Whitman Annis and head coach Evo Motzik have rebuilt the Riveters into a strong postseason contender after a disastrous 2018-2019 campaign. And, under the watchful eye of captain and original NWHLer Madison Packer, next season's Riveters are out for blood. The team had a fairly solid 10 wins, 11 losses, and 3 overtime losses in 2019-2020, with especially strong performances against league powerhouses like the Pride and the Whitecaps. First on our list of notable players is Captain Madison Packer, who's been nothing short of elite and has embodied the spirit of the Riveters in each of the six seasons she's been with the team. Packer scored 13 goals and registered 21 assists for a total of 34 points in the NWHL this season, and is named an all-star captain for her efforts. 
Not to mention she's got the prestige of being a part of the Riveters 2018 Isabel Cup Championship squad. Up next is defender Rebecca Morse, affectionately nicknamed Moose by her friends and fans. Morse will be entering her fifth year in the league in 2020 and put up a pretty solid 11 points during her last season. Better yet, she was selected to the 2020 All-Star Game by fan vote, so get ready for Moose to mosey her way into your heart if you elect to follow the Riveters. Two rookie forwards round out our players to watch for this Tri-State team, the first of which is Kate Leary, who was awarded the 2019-2020 Newcomer of the Year Award for her spectacular showing on the stat sheet. In just 22 games, Leary potted 16 goals and 11 assists for 27 points. She was rewarded by being named to the 2020 All-Star Game and is signed on for her second season with the Rivs next year. Our second returning rookie forward is Kendall Cornine, nicknamed Kendall Score 9 because of her tendency to score big goals. She'll be entering her second season next year as well off a tremendous rookie campaign in which she scored 13 goals and 11 assists for 24 points, all while keeping the team's spirits up and showing off her slap shot. Cornine, like many of her distinguished teammates, was also named the 2020 All-Star Game. There were many talented draft picks by the Riveters to choose from, but our draft pick to watch is the 21st overall selection of the draft, defender Bridget Prentice out of Franklin Pierce University. Prentice has absolutely stunned her conference this past season and the entire NCAA in her first year of Division I play, leading all defenders in her school's conference with 13 goals and 14 assists for a whopping 27 points over 19 games. Talk about a scoring threat! You can follow the Riveters on Instagram and Twitter, at Riveters, which should be pretty easy to remember. Now, like always, you're probably wondering why this team of fierce competitors deserves your support. And who better than original NWHLer and original Riveter, 2020 All-Star Captain and Captain of the Riveters, Madison Packer, to tell you about her team. Hey guys, Madison Packer here from the Metropolitan Riveters. I wear number 14 with the Rivs. I was captain last season. I've been with the Riveters for six years, and uh, we hope to see you guys uh, cheering us on for some games next season. We've got a strong offensive core coming back. We've got some great defensemen, uh, some new goalies in between the pipes, and we're hoping for some big things in uh, Rivers Nation. We've got phenomenal fans who cheer us on all season long, and they're going to continue to do that next year. So we hope to see you part of it. Thanks, Madison. Okay, now things are about to start heating up as we introduce the first pseudo-expansion team in the NWHL, the Minnesota Whitecaps. The first expansion wasn't a true expansion in that it didn't involve the creation of a new team. Instead, the Minnesota Whitecaps, who had existed independently for several years, were invited to join the league. And join the league they did, with a very impressive showing in their first season that resulted in the team winning the 2019 Isabel Cup on home ice in Trier Rink in St. Paul, Minnesota. The Whitecaps are currently organized by general manager Jack Brott, and while they've yet to appoint a head coach, whoever gets behind the bench of this talented team is sure to take them far. In Season 5, the Whitecaps were captained by original Whitecap Winnie Brott Brown, who'd been a part of the squad since even before their NWHL days. In 2019-2020, the Whitecaps finished in second place in league standings with a 17-5-2 record and were set to square off against the Boston Pride in the Isabel Cup Final before it was cancelled due to the pandemic. The first player we want to take a look at on the Whitecaps is power forward Allie Thunstrom, who was named the 2019-2020 NWHL Co-MVP after she posted an impressive 24 goals and 12 assists for 36 points on the regular season. Thunstrom will be starting her third season in the NWHL in 2020 and was a part of the 2019 team that brought Lady Isabel home to Minnesota. Like the rest of the Whitecaps we're about to mention, she was a 2020 All-Star. Up next, we have Amanda Boulier, an NWHL veteran who took her talents across the country from Connecticut to Minnesota. This defender will be embarking upon her fourth season in the league after a solid showing in 2019-2020, where she registered six goals and 21 helpers for 27 points, en route to setting the league record for the most goals scored by a defender. She was a 2020 All-Star and an esteemed member of the Connecticut Whale before she joined the Whitecaps ahead of their inaugural season in the league. As always, our overview wouldn't be complete without a goaltender, and Minnesota's is something special. Amanda Levier is a two-time Isabel Cup champion, 
once with Buffalo in 2017 and once with Minnesota in 2019. She was a 2020 All-Star and gave rookie Lovisa Salander a run for her money in the annual Best Goaltender race, posting a 2.08 goals against average and a save percentage of .923 over 23 games started. To round out the current Whitecaps you should keep your eye on, we've got Jonna Curtis, a forward that's quietly determined to make an impact without making a big deal about it. Curtis registered 14 goals and 22 assists last season en route to the Isabel Cup Final and was named a 2020 All-Star for her efforts. She's also got some bling in her collection as she was a part of the 2019 Isabel Cup Championship winning squad with the Whitecaps. Finally, we move on to the only draft pick we're going to cover who hasn't signed with the team that drafted her yet. But our fingers are crossed on this one because Bemidji State forward Haley Mack is something special. Drafted 23rd overall, Mack finished 13th in scoring in Bemidji State program history after four illustrious years with the program, capped off with a 15-goal performance her senior season. If she joins the Whitecaps on the ice in January, she's sure to make an immediate impact. You can keep up with the Whitecaps by following them at MN Whitecaps on Instagram and at Whitecaps Hockey on Twitter. Now, we're going to hand it over to the Whitecaps goalie tandem of Amanda Levier and Allie Morse to tell you why the westernmost team in the NWHL deserves your fandom ahead of Season hey, 6. Hey Whitecaps fans, I'm Allie. Hey, I'm Lev. And we're goaltenders for the Whitecaps. Whitecaps! <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Minnesota Whitecaps is such an important element of women's hockey in Minnesota. It's been around since 2004 and it's built a lot of opportunities for women who have just graduated college who are looking for a professional league to play in and also at the youth levels. There's so many youth fans that come to our games that are on the ice with us. Me, and Allie are actually coaches in Minnesota. We coach for OS Hockey and every single home game we had one of our goaltenders on the ice and it's so cool to see the smiles and the joy on their faces and it's also such a, a pleasure for us to have the opportunity to be not only professional women's hockey players but also coaches to a lot of the young girls that are in the program. And, and now we have our first true expansion with the addition of the Toronto Six. Canada's first NWHL franchise and the sixth team in the league, making its debut in season six of NWHL play. Sixth team, sixth season, the Toronto Six. Are you guys picking up what I'm putting down? Anyways, the Six don't have a home rink, a head coach, or a captain yet, but they do have a phenomenal general manager and former Buttes mastermind Mandy Cronin. Cronin and the independent leadership group that brought the NWHL to Toronto have put together a brilliant team that is sure to be a contender in their first season of play. So, without further ado, let's talk about the team. Kelly Babstock is our first notable player and one of the biggest names joining the Six ahead of next season. Babstock spent three years with the Will and a year with the Buttes before sitting out of the NWHL last season and playing in showcases with the PWHPA. She's a skilled forward with a knack for scoring nifty goals, and you won't want to miss her on the ice next season as she enters her fifth year in the league. Up next is defender Lindsay Eastwood, an undrafted free agent signing out of Syracuse University. Eastwood spent 2019 to 2020 as her team's leader in points among defenders, with eight goals and 20 assists through 36 games played. She even helped the Syracuse Orange to their first ever CHA Conference Championship during the 2018-2019 season. In net, we've got Elaine Shuley, who has two years of professional experience outside of the NWHL under her belt. She spent a season each with the CWHL's Vanky Rays and Toronto Furies, and then spent 2019 to 2020 with the PWHPA, just like Babstock. She'll be an NWHL rookie next year, but she's far from new to professional women's hockey. Our last player to watch for the six is Michaela Grant Mentis, a forward out of Merrimack College who actually has two games of professional experience under her belt, as she joined the Buffalo Buttes for the end of their season this past year. In two games with the Buttes, she notched three points, which is pretty impressive when you consider the rigorous NCAA season she had just finished. In fact, while at Merrimack, Grant Mentis led all Merrimack skaters in scoring by a 16-point margin. Talk about elite! Finally, our draft pick to watch for the Toronto Six is forward Natalie Marcuse, 
who just finished up her senior season at Robert Morris in the CHA. She was drafted 22nd overall by the Six after tying a career high in points her senior year, with 7 goals and 8 assists for 15 points. She's definitely going to make some waves in the league and on her team next year as a reliable middle six option. Don't forget to keep up with the Toronto Six on social media, on Instagram at the.toronto6 and on Twitter at the Toronto Six. Hi everyone, I'm Lindsay Eastwood, number 44 on the Toronto Six. Women's hockey is back in Canada. This is our inaugural season in the NWHL, and we're the only professional women's sports team in Canada. So why not cheer for us? We have a ton of new faces to the league, a bunch of Canadians, a bunch of girls that played overseas in Europe, a ton of rookies. I'm a rookie myself, and I'm just super excited. We're ready to grow the game of women's hockey here in Toronto, in Ontario, in Canada, in the United States. So. We would love all your support that we can get and uh, some more fans behind us as we get ready to kick off this season. Thanks so much, Lindsay. Now, a lot of people will argue that the most important people in a hockey league are the players on the ice, but we'd argue that the people off of it can be just as important. Let's take a look at three influential women who have changed the NWHL and the women's hockey landscape for the better. First, we've got Erica Ayala, who is on the broadcast crew for the Boston Pride and the Connecticut Whale this past season. She's also a media member and an advocate for social justice in women's sports, and has an incredible social justice in women's hockey video series that we'll leave the links to in the description. Up next is Anya Packer, and you might recognize that name from earlier because she's married to Riveters captain Madison Packer. Anya Packer used to play in the NWHL as a defender for the Whale, but has since moved into an off-ice role with the league as executive director of the NWHLPA and served as the Riveters' color commentator last season. Finally, we have Alyssa Turner, who's been an integral part of growing the reach of the NWHL these past two seasons. She's a social media guru with loads of experience working in sports and actually helped coordinate and run the 2020 NWHL draft. She now helps manage social content for the NWHL and for the Toronto Six in her native Ontario. Now, you might be thinking that all of this information is fine and good and great and whatever, but how do you watch the NWHL? Don't worry, we've got the answers. The league announced at the beginning of the 2019-2020 season that they would be entering a three-year deal with the streaming platform Twitch to broadcast all NWHL games and special events. You can catch up on all of the past games on the NWHL's two Twitch channels, twitch.tv slash NWHL and twitch.tv slash NWHL2, and tune in to future games and future events at those same two links. If you want to know more about the NWHL and women's hockey, there's no shortage of content out there. A bunch of writers cover the NWHL full and part-time for a variety of blogs, some of the biggest blogs that cover women's hockey include SB Nation's The Ice Garden, The Victory Press, and The Hockey Writers, whose websites and socials you can find on screen and in the description. So, what's next? We just gave you a pretty overwhelming amount of information, so naturally, to compound that, we're going to give you some homework. First, follow the league, your favorite teams, and your favorite players on social media. Subscribe to the NWHL on Twitch. Keep up to date on NWHL and women's hockey news by following media members and publications. And stay tuned to our channel for more women's hockey info sessions, including seminars on the PWHPA and the NCAA. Thank you so much for watching and make sure you leave any questions in the chat or in the comments of this video. Like this video and subscribe to our channel for more content too. We'll be taking questions in the chat for a few more minutes, so stick around for those answers or hit us up on Twitter at The Ice Garden. Thanks again, and we'll see you soon for more women's hockey.